Welcome to Classic Game Room. It's time to put down that PSP, Game Boy, Game Gear, DS, GameCom, iPad, Atari Lynx, or Neo Geo Pocket because this is Klonoa Moonlight Museum on the Bandai Wonder Swan. In stereo. Klonoa on the Bandai Wonder Swan. All right, this is Kaze no Klonoa, which according to the internet translates to Klonoa of the Wind, Moonlight Museum. I believe this is Klonoa's second adventure, released in 1998 or 99 in Japan, for the surprisingly capable Bandai Wonder Swan, which plays this game very well. Lots of good motion, even though the screen is not backlit. This is a black and white release being played here on the Swan Crystal, which is the color variant of the Wonder Swan. But check this out, Klonoa Moonlight Museum plays horizontally as well as vertically. Now you know what all those buttons on the Wonder Swan do. Moonlight Museum plays like pretty much every other Klonoa game, especially the 2D ones on the Game Boy Advance, except some levels are horizontal, other levels make use of the vertical screen layout. It doesn't really change the gameplay, it's just kind of neat. I've enjoyed all of the Klonoa games that I've played, but one of the things that's really missing from this release is color. Klonoa is a colorful series, and when you remove the color, you remove half of what makes Klonoa, Klonoa. Fortunately, the gameplay retains that puzzle-solving, platforming style, where you grab enemies and double-jump with them, occasionally having to hit switches, throw timed enemies, climb things, jump over spikes, you know the drill. If you've played any of the other Klonoa games, you won't be surprised by Moonlight Museum. You may be surprised at how capable the Bandai Wonder Swan is, though. Provided you have enough light to see this thing, it works remarkably well. Let's take a look at the black and white model, which plays pretty much the same, except the screen isn't quite as good as the color one. Like the other games in the series, you're figuring out how to get through these platforming levels, collecting gems or whatever those are, and stars to unlock the door to complete the level. It's a cute, catchy, fun game. All of the Klonoa games are good, and if you're collecting for the Wonder Swan, you want this one. If you're a huge Klonoa fan, I'm not sure you get that much more here than you would get out of the more accessible Game Boy Advance releases, but uh, now you know it exists, if maybe you didn't. And of course, who do we have to thank for this but Mohammed in Qatar, the world's biggest Klonoa fan. I would say the most memorable feature in Moonlight Museum is that it plays horizontally and vertically. It doesn't really do that much to affect gameplay, it's just kinda neat. And shows some creativity. If you're looking to play Moonlight Museum, the Bandai Wonder Swan can be found fairly affordably online. It was pretty popular in Japan, so there's a lot of them out there, and Moonlight Museum can be picked up out there as well. It saves your levels after you complete them, and it's genuinely a fun game. So thank you once again to Mohammed. It's another excellent Klonoa game. I still have several more to play. It's always good to break out the Wonder Swan every now and then and clear my mind of the GameCom. It may not be backlit, it may not be terribly attractive, but the Wonder Swan and the Swan Crystal work really well as long as you have some light. So don't say Kaze no Klonoa, say Kaze yes Klonoa. Moonlight Museum.